Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I'm doing okay, Brian, in this uh, new year of 2023. And by the way, I'm sure you know this already. It's 120 days till the Kentucky Derby. I'm counting. I'm literally counting the days here in Kentucky, Matt. Thank you for reminding me the the exact uh, time frame. Well, we, we're due for another Kentucky Derby only show, but this show will be Kentucky Derby hopefuls because we're going to look at coast to coast, Matt. We're going to look at two Kentucky Derby points races. By the way, these are actually the last ten point to the winner uh, races uh, as we start soon with the twenty pointers. I think the Lecomte will be the first of those down in New Orleans. But for today. We're looking at New York on Saturday. We're looking at Southern California on Sunday. Are you ready, sir? I am ready. All right. Well, the first one we're going to do, there's our cover boy today, Arctic Arrogance. He leads the field, Matt, for the Jerome. Arctic Arrogance, of course, coming off a good second last time in the Remsen, a very game second in the nine furlong, grade two Remsen. The Jerome isn't listed as a graded stakes these days, but I think this field could uh, could help get it back to grade three uh, next year. We'll see. We'll see how these horses uh, develop, but it's an interesting field. It also strikes me, Matt, there, there's a whole bunch of uh, New York bred presence in the Jerome. Yeah, there certainly is, and, and I think that's part of your comment of it being an interesting field. There are three New York breds in this field that have won New York bred stakes races already, along with some other interesting New York breds. Yeah, well, half the field is New York breds, four of them. Yeah, three of them are stakes winners, and the other one uh, could be the horse to beat. We'll see. But we'll start with the six, Arctic Arrogance, his son of Frosted Matt, trained by Linda Rice. He's been nothing but good in his career so far, uh, breaking his maiden at first asking, running first or second in every race. And I thought he was particularly good last time on an off track, albeit in the Remsen. Yeah, I agree, Brian. Uh, a terrific record for uh, trained by Linda Rice, whose barn is uh, really on fire this winter uh, in New York. She's winning races uh, 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 all the time and, and Arctic arrogance is one of a number of horses in this field that prefer to do their best running either on the lead or pressing the pace. Yeah, well, hey, there it is. The U.S. Uh, time form U.S. pace projector, Matt. Yeah, Arctic Arrogance, you see him there on the outside there in, I guess that's fourth or co-third, uh, but you see up there the red in the upper right says fast pace. And if you're on a podcast, I apologize for assuming you can see it, but this Time form U.S. pace projector for the Jerome is uh, predicting a fast pace here. It has Arctic Arrogance very close to the lead, but not quite on the lead. Yeah, it looks like there's a bunch of speed. Arctic Arrogance should be part of it as he's been a part of the, the lead in all four starts. Uh, you can call him the class of the race, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll talk about more about that in a little bit. But if we're calling the New York bred Arctic Arrogance the likely favorite the class of the race, then the other end of the spectrum would be Neural Network, Matt, who I think will also get a lot of money. But his only start was a maiden race against New York breds. Yeah, Brian, and uh, a maiden race against New York breds coming from the barn of Chad Brown uh, was a very impressive winner of his debut race back in November. Um, he won that race by five lengths, drawing away easily to win. Um, interestingly, he went off at odds of five to one. Yeah, I do think that's interesting because often Chad Brown, you know this, Matt, uh, Chad Brown horses are bet uh, a lot, uh, e even first race out. Neural Network wasn't bet all that much in that maiden special weight for New York Prince. He won by five lengths. Time, uh, you know, take it. For its worth at Aqueduct, we get a lot of slow times at Aqueduct, but the time wasn't anything that jumps off the page, but he did it impressively. But uh, now it's a big jump up in class to go from that uh, state-bred maiden race up into the Jerome, but an interesting horse who should be able to come from off the pace a little bit. 
Uh, the next horse on our morning line, Matt, is Lugan Knight. And this is a horse that interests me uh, quite a bit. He's coming from Kentucky where he's only won one of three, but I think he's run well in each of those three starts. Trained by Michael McCarthy, the son of Golden Sense, is coming out of a tough allowance sprint last time at Churchill Downs. Yeah, Brian. Uh, and and I kind of, in my mind, handicapping the race, uh, lumped uh, Lugan Knight together with Neural Net Neural Network as the more lightly raced horses in this field as the two horses who, in my mind, have the most potential to move forward and run a bigger race. You mentioned Michael McCarthy, uh, who I typically think of as a California trainer, but recently has a string of horses uh, in Kentucky. And this is one of them shipping up to New York. You mentioned that third in an allowance race at Churchill Downs last time. Let me point out that the winner of that race was Victory Formation from the barn of Brad Cox, who just won the Smarty Jones on the Derby Trail at Oakland Park. Yeah, Victory Formation is a uh, highly regarded, impressive, undefeated colt. And uh, Lugan Knight last time was rallying to be a good third in that allowance race. He won at Keeneland previous to that, and he ran a good debut race when he was second. So Lugan Knight has done nothing wrong so far for trainer Michael McCarthy out in Kentucky. I think he's been running against good horses, Matt. Obviously, Victory Formation you mentioned, but I think there's a bunch of good horses in his past performances that he's run without having faced stakes horses yet. But probably there's a bunch of stakes horses in those races that he's been running. Uh, interestingly, despite rallying last time, they have him as part of the fast pace. I don't know if I love that, uh, but uh, he's horse I think can come from a little bit off the pace at least because uh, we've seen it in those sprints. He's stretching out to a mile, but as a son of golden sense, you would expect a mile should be right up his alley. And unlike Neural Network, I know he's run against good horses. So that's something to be said for Neural. Uh, that's something to be said for Luke and Knight here in the Jerome. All right, Matt, who else? We can get back to the New York Reds, I guess. And Diamo Firenze is another fast New York bred who's got plenty of stakes experience. Uh, he actually tried the champagne. He set the pace in a sloppy edition of the champagne this year before backing out a little bit late. But he's run several good races. Uh, he, he's coming off a loss at Finger Lakes last time, but don't let that fool you. That was a pretty fast stakes race for New York Reds going six furlongs. Uh, he's one that I would really expect Matt to be out there pressing this strong pace. Yeah, no doubt, Brian. Uh, uh, and Adiamo Aferenze really hasn't run a bad race. That was a pretty good field uh, in the Champagne. Um, and, and, has done his good work out front and, or right near the lead. I don't know, Brian. I think I, in my mind, the mile may just be a little bit outside of his distance preference. As a son of Spatestown, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. But judging by how fast he's run early and the fact that he has been beaten late in a few of these stakes races, I can't disagree with you, but he might have the... Uh, uh, a potential at least to go on to two turns. We'll see. But this could be a tough spot. And you see the pace projector has him as the leader out of all of them on, again, what is projected to be a fast pace. Another horse who should sh pl show plenty of speed is Valenzen Day, a son of Kozan, moving to the barn of Linda Rice, interestingly, and coming off a nice win last time, albeit against Cheaper. Yeah. And, and interestingly, uh, this horse started out his career uh, in a, a very promising way, was a debut winner um, early as a two-year-old, I think back in May or June, and then stepped up to run third in the, in the Tremont. A lot of races between those two big efforts and uh, the, the race uh, most recently, uh, going seven furlongs from which Linda Rice claimed Valenzen Day. I wouldn't be surprised if the way the Rice Barn is going that uh, 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 this guy runs a decent race and, and will have some better odds, might be one to use in the trifecta or so. 
Yeah, it, he's never been a distance. So as a son of Kozan, I worry a little bit about the two turns. I also worry that he's um, uh, moving up in class as some of the others are. But uh, he he's one that I think will be part of this pace as well. You see him there on the rail in third in the pace projector. Uh, an interesting horse. No horse in this field has won as many races as he has. Uh, but he'll have to uh, improve on his previous stakes attempts. But now, like you said, Linda Rice, a hot barn, first race for them. So uh, two interesting Linda Rice horses in the field map. I think the, the rest of the field is going to be a little bit longer, although General Banker is the third New York bred stakes winner in the field, and he did it as a maiden after several losses. Yeah, let me just point out about that and, and not to take anything away from the fact that he won a big race with a big, big $500,000 purse uh, to get him finally get a win as a maiden. Uh, on that day, there were a couple of those uh, New York Stallion Series races, one for the boys, one for the girls. And in both of them, there were large fields, but the majority of the fields were maiden. So, yes, he broke the he won that race as a maiden, but in that, in that big field, uh, there were probably six or seven maidens. Yeah, that's good information, Matt Schiffman. And uh, yeah, it, this certainly will be a step up from that uh, New York Stallion Series stakes win last time. He had been beaten several times before. He is one of the horses who should be able to come from off the place a little bit, as are the other two horses who should be double digits. You know, I can't throw out circling the drain. He's a son of West Coast who's only had two starts. They're both in Maryland, uh, a good second in his debut. Then he dropped down to maiden claiming, which looks pretty bad as he's coming up to the Jerome, but he won it for fun. Could be a horse better than that uh, uh, dropping to maiden claiming in his second start would suggest. Yeah, I think trainer Brittany Russell breathed a big sigh of relief, uh, of relief that uh, circling the drain didn't get claimed out of that big victory. The last horse in the field, Matt, is uh, Narcis Narcisco Dali. Uh, looks like a long shot, but uh, he too is coming off a win. Yep, another maiden claiming win. Uh, this one for a $75,000 tag. Another one that uh, prefers to be up near the lead. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see, but an interesting field here for the drum and actually one I'm looking forward to from a handicapping and betting perspective. We'll shift gears, Matt. One day, one coast away is the sham stakes the grade three sham stakes out at santa anita another kentucky derby points race this week and we only have six which is a little disappointing and and four of them are from the same trainer but uh hey it's bob baffert's world out there in southern california and uh, everybody else is just living in it baffert looks tough with four horses i think all four of them have a shot in here matt on the other hand, uh, there's a lot to like about the other two horses in the field. So maybe we'll have a very interesting sham. And let's not hand this to Bob Baffert just yet. Breaking from the rail is Newgate, who was an impressive uh, first out winner, son of Into Mischief. He's had three graded stakes efforts since where he has failed to find the winner's circle. But the last one showed some promise when he chased the fast, having a meltdown around the track in the uh what was the name of that matt i want to say it's the bob hope yes it absolutely it was the bob hope uh brian and right uh, uh, uh one of those quintessential bob baffert horses that uh, Blake, uh breaks their maiden at first asking at short odds and and looks really impressive doing so and moved up to uh stakes company uh first two tries were not really encouraging, but the Bob Hope was uh, much better. You know, it, it's you talked about Baffert in this race. Baffert has won the sham eight times. He had nine horses nominated for uh, the, the sham this year and, and I guess decided only to enter four of them. Only enter four. Yeah, why not? Uh, four, four probably will be enough, but uh, like we said, not necessarily – and the sham has produced some really good horses uh, for, for Mr. Bob Baffert in the past. Newgate, I, I, I wouldn't throw him out. He gets blinkers off, actually. So uh, we'll see what that does to the speed. You see, again, or maybe you don't see, 
the fast pace projection by the time form U.S. pace projector here, Matt. Uh, you would figure off all his races, Newgate would be a part of that. Blinkers off. Maybe they'll try to take him from just off the pace. We'll see. But a horse you certainly can't throw out. Number two, probably the class of the race. Uh, uh, it probably should take the probably out of that statement, Matt. Could National Treasure after a debut win for the son of Quality Road. He's run two grade one races since then. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. You know, in my mind, and, and uh, amongst the long list of uh, three-year-olds that uh, have won races already, maiden races, stakes races uh, uh, for the Baffert Barn, uh, National Treasure is probably the number two horse in the Baffert Barn behind uh, Cave Rock. Yeah, and a lot of people would argue that with some of his uh, horses that have just run maiden races so far. We'll we'll see, but uh, yeah, as far as accomplishments as a two-year-old, National Treasure has to be uh, right up there. He was second to Cave Rock, albeit a well-beaten second uh, in the American Pharaoh, but that was a very good performance in his second career race to be second in that grade one out at Santa Anita, and then he went to Keeneland, and a uh, big field, a lot of good horses, and he was good enough to be third in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. So a lot of things are unproven here in the sham, and, and, and maybe that there's just a little bit of that with National Treasure yet to have broken through in a stakes race, but uh, those two good races and grade one races makes him the horse to beat. He's also a horse who can come from a little bit off the pace. Uh, so I think the combination of going out back to Southern California, uh, dropping down in class just a little bit, I think this is a sneaky good field of six grade three, but he is dropping down in class for sure, coming out of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, and, and the fact that he can come from off the pace a little bit, all of that makes National Treasure uh, the horse to beat here in the sham. Another Baffert, number three, Speedboat Beach, a very interesting horse who looked the part of a super fast horse in his first two races. The first race was a maiden race on the dirt. The second race was a stakes race on the turf. He's had a couple races since then, both on the turf, both against good horses, Matt. Coming off a stakes win, there's a lot to like, but there's also a bunch to worry about, I think, with Speedboat Beach. Yeah, and, and certainly uh, Speedboat speed boat Beach, say that five times fast, uh, is uh, uh, started out his career looking like your typical uh, Baffert uh, two-year-old with a very impressive debut victory at Del Mar. And then, and, and then interestingly, uh, Baffert moved him to the turf. Not, not an expected move, but... Uh, it was a good move because since then, Speedboat Beach has two uh, turf victories. Uh, one of them in a great, one of them in a Grade Three. Ran in the Breeders' Cup uh, Juvenile Turf, uh, finished ninth. But then, as you said, bounced back to win the recent Speakeasy again on the turf, and now back to the dirt. I guess to to uh, take a measure to see if uh, Speedboat. Beach belongs on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Yeah, it's not a Bayern. And Bayern was one of those horses who kind of kept surprising as he worked his way up to the ultimate of, of a Breeders' Cup Classic win. Don't get me started about the start of that Breeders' Cup Classic all those years ago. But anyway, I digress. Uh, Speedboat Beach, an interesting horse, a very fast horse. Uh, so the fact that he was able to bounce back off that pretty good beating in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint to win going a mile last time back in Southern California on the turf was a good sign for him moving forward. But on the other hand, I worry maybe he's just not intended for the very best with the way he uh, uh, backed out a little bit in the Breeders' Cup. Uh, the move back to dirt, though, doesn't bother me. His maiden, his debut performance was so good on the dirt that I see no reason why he can't uh, bring it back to the dirt. But again, this is a race with uh, an expected fast pace, and he would be certainly one you would think to be right out there, although he did show just a little bit uh, uh, more of the ability to relax early last time in winning that one-mile turf stakes. All right, about it, uh, Matt, another horse, another Bob Baffert. Uh, it's the four reincarnate. Uh, this one doesn't have the stakes experience of his three stable mates, Matt, but reincarnate a son of the good young sire, good magic, 
uh, reincarnate has been good in four races. They're all maiden races, though. The first two on the turf, the last two on the dirt. Uh, I thought the first two races of his career were pretty good on the turf, but I think last two on the dirt were even better. It's coming off a uh, game win last time. Yeah, uh, another interesting horse in that Baffert started this guy. Uh, his career on the grass, not a typical move for Baffert. Uh, and then uh, in his fourth try, uh, broke his maiden at Del Mar. Uh, this one is certainly going to be the longest price of the four Bafferts. Yeah, the longest price of the four. But again, one I can't throw out. I, I guess I'm uh, wishy-washy here and saying you, you probably shouldn't throw at any one of these six horses in the in, in the sham on sunday reincarnate looks to be one who would be a little farther off the pace maybe with national treasure of the uh, of the baffert baffert for it. all right matt that's enough baffert let's get to some other horses we have two other horses for you and they're both darn interesting paxa wallop has been a very nice horse uh on the grass a son of creative cause now he does have one dirt race in his career matt but it came on a sloppy track back at Gulfstream Park. He ran evenly to be fourth that day. I think we can forgive that performance on a sloppy track in his career debut where he didn't run all that bad. Since then, he's been very good on turf. Two stakes wins going around two turns where he's come from off the pace a little bit for trainer Jeff Mullins. And last time, if you really look at it, uh, in fact, comparing his Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf performance to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint performance of Speedboat Beach, I think Paxa Wallop did better in the Breeders' Cup, even though he, too, finished out of the top half of the field. He was only beaten four lengths, and he was in tight a lot of the way, Matt. I didn't think it was all that bad. He looks like a nice horse as he comes back to dirt. Yeah, he does look like a nice horse. Uh, terrific wins uh, <clears throat> on the grass. Again, I guess they're taking a, a look here in the sham to see if he belongs on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Uh, Hard to know what to expect, but sure has run well. Yeah, he's run well. He's another one who probably can come from a little off the pace, although like every of the, of the others in here, he doesn't need to be way back. So that's probably not a bad thing. The distance should suit him. I think he's an interesting horse, and I think he probably will be ignored a little bit at the windows as uh, not one of the Baffert four, nor is he the most interesting of the non-Bafferts because the six, spun intended, that truly could be any kind, a, a son of hard spun trained by Mark Glatt. Uh, a little bit of trouble in his first race where he ran second to a promising Baffert runner, a good second. And then he came back and won for fun. Yeah, he certainly made up for uh, any problems he had in that debut race when he broke his maiden at Del Mar, uh, drawing away by six lengths. Yeah, it was, a, it was an impressive maiden win. I've also been impressed with his workouts of late. Spun intended, looks like a very talented horse. He's done nothing but sprint in those two races. So this will be, uh, again, a two-turn mile, just like the Jerome. This will be a move up in distance for Spun intended, but really could be any kind. And uh, uh, it could even be the second choice in this race that's loaded with Baffert stakes horses. So you know Spun intended is a well intended young horse uh, uh, for trainer Mark Glad here. And interestingly, Matt, I want to look at that pace projector one more time because it has spun intended out on the lead. And, and I don't know, he was able to rally the first time he showed more speed last time, but he's past horses. So I know he's coming out of fast sprints, but I could see spun intended sitting off of maybe a Baffert or two in here early. We'll see. Um, if he tries to show too much speed in the sham, it could end up hurting him or or maybe he ends up being the most talented horse in the race and wins this anyway. All right, Matt, I, I, every once in a while, once a month or so, I like to, to put you on the spot here on Horse Center. And, and I, I know I know you hate it, but I can't resist. Matt, are any of these horses that we're talking about in the Jerome and Sham, are they going to end up in the Kentucky Derby? Are we talking about Kentucky Derby horses here in the first week in January? Um. Probably not. Uh, I, I guess the probably not. Maybe more so with the Jerome. I think more recent history in the Sham has had the Sham being a productive race uh, for the 
Kentucky Derby going back to uh, authentic a few years ago who won the sham and went on to win the the race. So um, sham has been more productive recently. Um, but again, it, it's 120 days and those 120 days have become so much more important than they used to be in terms of the Derby. That's true. Good answer. I, I like that answer. I'm going to agree with you as far as which race is more likely to produce Kentucky Derby horses. I, I do think it's the sham. I think there are some very talented horses in the sham. Mile and a quarter uh, will be a question for many of them. But I think the sham will produce a Kentucky Derby horse or two. Not so sure about the Jerome, but a very interesting betting race with a lot of maybe great three types who could uh, make the Jerome a very interesting race. So without further ado, let's talk about betting that Jerome. Uh, Matt, we're going to start with you as we usually do, and we're going to go with uh, some top picks here. Who is your number one in the Jerome? I found myself uh, leaning towards the more lightly raced horses. I found myself leaning towards Neural Network and Lugan, Lugan Knight. Um, I think some of those New York breads that have stakes wins um, are really good horses, and I and I see them winning more New York bred stakes races in the future and, and having great careers where they make a lot of money. But uh, for the Derby Trail, stretching out to the one-turn mile um, in the Jerome, uh, for me it was between Neural Network and Lugan Knight, and I ended up making Neural Network my top pick Chad Brown seems to be really high on this horse that was sired by Cloud Computing, who, of course, gave Chad a Preakness win not too many years ago. Matt, if there's one horse in here that goes on to have any sort of success in the Triple Crown races, I think you hit on him. I think it probably would be Neural Network. I'm just not quite sold coming out of that state Fred maiden race up to the Jerome, a pretty tough Jerome. So, yeah, Neural Network is one of my top two as well. And we landed on the same two horses because Neural Network is my second pick. And a big part of that is pace. You didn't really talk about the pace here just now. So I'll, I'll, I'll reinstate it. There's a lot of pace in the Jerome. And, and I'm looking for a horse to come from a little bit off the pace. And I think either Neural Network could do that. And I think Lugan Knight has shown that he can do that. I also think Lugan Knight has raced against good horses in Kentucky. So... We're both hoping that Arctic Arrogance is the favorite as he deserves to be off his past performances. We're both going another way, maybe with horses who are up and comers and can come from just off the pace in the Jerome. Unfortunately, Matt, I'm sad to see that we're both chalk eating weasels in the sham. I assume National Treasure is going to be the favorite. I guess that's not etched in stone uh, coming off a couple of losses, but he should be off those two good grade one performances why did you pick National Treasure as your top pick in the uh, in the sham? And I, uh, you know, but before I get to that, I just want to say, you know, uh, Baffert's got four out of six uh, in this field just on just on numbers. Uh, it seems likely that he's going to have get another victory in the sham. But three weeks ago, Brian, in the Los Al Futurity, it was the same kind of scenario where it was a five horse field and Baffert had three of them. But Baffert didn't win the race. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, this is a better bunch of Bafferts in the sham. And like I said, uh, National Treasure, the races that he has run in, the horses he has run against, there are just far less question marks about National Treasure than the others in the field, especially the, the, the ones that have been running really well on the turf. You just don't know what to expect. I guess by default, I go to National Treasure. Yeah, I'm going to look at the pace again. I think much like the Jerome, we're looking at a pretty fast pace here. So I too went with the horse I think couldn't come from just a little bit off the pace. And that is National Treasure. His class stands out in here uh, second and third in the last two races. But those that was Cape Rock and Forte. So uh, those are good horses to be just behind. National Treasures, the horse to beat in here, and I just couldn't pick against him. However, I do like both of the horses not trained by Baffert, and those would be my second and third 
picks in here in uh, Pac, Paxa Wallop and, uh, and the Mark Lab horse, who uh, is fun intended is his name. So both very interesting. Paxa Wallop coming from off the turf, but I, I, I think he can make that transition to dirt. It's on a creative cause, who I like on dirt. And uh, spun intended, but I couldn't pick them uh, as a top pick just because of the dirt factor for Paxawalla and uh, and, and the and the two turn uh, jump up in class for spun intended. National Treasure is my top pick as well. That's the show, Matt. Uh, Kentucky Derby props. We're going to be talking more and more Kentucky Derby in would you say the next 120 days or so? Uh, before we get to more shows, though, let me get a parting shot from you, my good friend. Yeah, interesting. Kentucky Derby, trail races, East Coast, West Coast, spanning the country to bring you the thrill of thoroughbred racing is Horse Center. And thank you all for watching the show. You went out just a little bit wide. Our world of sports on that. Yeah, it and did. That, that brought me back to my childhood a little bit. I like it. Hey, we got to thank everybody. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics. We love Candace. They're in the home office in Louisville. Derby Wars, the best contest site out there for their sponsorship. And thank you to Timeform US for those great pace projectors. And most of all, thanks to you folks out there for watching Horse Center every week. We sure do appreciate it if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet. What are you waiting for? Go ahead and do that for us, Matt, and I appreciate it. Uh, we'll be back next week with another big edition of Horse Center, folks. We look forward to seeing you then.